Hi, I'm Tim Tyler, and today I will look at the origin of the phrase, a new kind of evolution. I've adopted this phrase as a way of referring to cultural evolution. Although the origins of cultural evolution are ancient, its embrace by evolutionary theorists may well represent the biggest revolution in evolutionary biology in the last 150 years. In a radical turnaround, which many biologists have yet to digest, cultural evolution installs a traditional foe, namely intelligent design, at the heart of evolutionary theory, and paints the more traditional kind of evolution by random mutations as a primitive, degenerate type of evolutionary change, one that was only used for a brief period in order to get the process going in the first place, during the boot sequence of evolution. I have another video which introduces this topic if you are interested in more details. I'm not the first person to use the phrase a new kind of evolution in the context of cultural evolution. As far as I'm aware, the phrase originates with Richard Dawkins. He used it in his 1976 book, The Selfish Gene. Um, here's the relevant section. For more than 3,000 million years, DNA has been the only replicator worth talking about in the world, but it does not necessarily hold these monopoly rights for all time. Whenever conditions arise in which a new kind of replicator can make copies of itself, the new replicators will tend to take over and start a new kind of evolution of their own. Once this new evolution begins, it is in no necessary sense to be subservient to the old. The old gene-selected evolution, by making brains, provided the soup in which the new memes arose. Once self-copying memes had arisen, their own, much faster kind of evolution took off. We biologists have assimilated the idea of genetic evolution so deeply that we tend to forget that it is only one of many possible kinds of evolution. And now, here is Richard Dawkins in 2009, using the phrase again in a recent video. One inventor may set himself the task of improving methods of transport and produce the wheel. Generations of inventors, each building on the accumulated achievements of their predecessors, are capable of producing the supersonic airliner, and the space shuttle. Cultural evolution is a new kind of evolution, superficially similar to the old genetic evolution, capable of producing advances in technology which mirror the old genetic advances, but at a rate which may be a million times faster. The speed of this new kind of evolution, coupled with the ease with which the human brain can be reprogrammed to adopt a new major goal, and the single-minded tenacity with which it can pursue that goal once adopted are frightening, for they could presage great danger. There is, of course, a downside. Hans Moravec also used the phrase in his book, Robot. Culture lets us rapidly accommodate to environmental changes because it is a medium for a new kind of evolution. Collections of rules for behavior memes, to use a term invented by Richard Dawkins, pass from generation to generation, mutating and competing with alternatives, just as biological genes do, only much more quickly. A biological trait requires generations of selective replication to become established in a population, but a cultural practice can be altered and spread through an entire tribe many times in a single human lifetime. After hundreds of thousands of years of slow cultural meander, our ancestors stumbled onto a set of behaviours that catalyzed the creation of ever more behaviours and memories and physical implements to support them, a self-accelerating cycle that is reaching escape velocity today. Um, other authors have used the phrase as well. For example, here's David Lightfoot in 1999. Once language emerged, it brought with it means for communicating traditions and a new kind of evolution, a cultural evolution. At that point, the whole emphasis of human development moved into a different mode. And next, here's John Maynard Smith reviewing Daniel Dennett's book, Darwin's Dangerous Idea. A meme is an idea that can lodge in a person's mind and can be transmitted in print or by word of mouth to other minds. In other words, it is a replicator. What is peculiar about humans is that they can hold ideas in their heads and transmit them to others. They provide an environment in which a new kind of replicator, memes, can evolve. The human mind is another example of a crane. It evolved by natural selection without need for an intelligent designer. 
Once evolved, however, it provides a medium in which a new kind of evolution by natural selection can occur, involving a new kind of replicator, the meme. One problem with most of these usages, and indeed with the phrase itself, is the suggestion that cultural evolution represents a new, independent instance of the evolutionary process. I do not think that this is the most helpful way of thinking about the phenomenon. Rather, I prefer the perspective that cultural evolution is simply one aspect of the existing evolutionary process on the planet. This is because culture and DNA interact through processes such as genetic assimilation. Perhaps what I ought to say that I am talking about is a new kind of mechanism of evolutionary change. However, the contraction to a new kind of evolution is too appealing for me to resist. The phrase has also been used in a few other contexts. For example, it has been used to refer to genetic algorithms and synthetic life. Also, there have been some usages in the context of future changes, such as genetic engineering. For example, here is Russell Blackford. The idea of a new kind of evolution of the human species, driven by increasingly intimate and internalised technology, is one whose time has come. Every day, the idea seems a little bit less out there. It is increasingly familiar to the public, better understood, more and more plausible, and it merits examination from many view viewpoints. It's true that any future changes to humanity will probably be fuelled by cultural evolution. However, I prefer to emphasise that the new kind of evolution that I am talking about is not a speculative future phenomenon, but rather has been going on for millions of years already, and is primarily responsible for our large brain, our spoken language, reading and writing, human fart light, telecommunications, computers, and so on. The massive acceleration of evolutionary change that has led to modern humans and their artefacts. Um, enjoy.